Hey Droners, B here and welcome to another edition of Awesome Droner News. This week we have drone bats. Yeah, seriously, we have Trump news. Yeah, we're going there. And karma. So let's jump right into it. Coming in at number one, we also we have a company doing drone journalism school. The Support Institute is gathering several organizations, including Google and DJI, to pretty much do a droner like trash a drone crash course. Um, it's a three-day course where drone where journalists are going to show up and learn all about drones because obviously this seems like it's something that's meant to support the drone industry as a whole. Journalists kind of report on drones and a thing that they really don't understand, like how they fly, how people fly them, what the cameras can do, what they can't do. And this is really just pretty much like a public education course where they're going to have drones like Phantoms and Mavics there, show them how to use them, show them how to play with it. There's a good chance that a lot of them are probably going to buy the Mavic because it's awesome. Um, but DJI, of course, is sponsoring it. But either way, they're going to show them a bunch about drones, hoping that that makes better things happen for drone news. And you would think that this will be a huge promotional event, and I personally would expect this, something like this to be free. That's if it's going to go to journalists, but it's not. It's 300 bucks for the course, but I actually think it's worth it. If you're a journalist, you're covering tech news, you're covering any kind of anything involving drones ever, you probably should know what you're talking about. So $300 worth the education. Check it out. So coming in at number two, we have, like I mentioned before, a bat bot. And I really, as much as I want this to be associated with Batman, unfortunately it's not for the most part. But what it is, is the researchers at Brown University have been studying the flight patterns and how bats fly. And the reason is, know it or not, is that bats are pretty much the most agile creature in the animal kingdom when they're in the air or close to it. Because they just have so many moving things in the way that their wings work, I guess. I don't know how it works that well. But they do. And that's why they're researching it and they're creating drone looking bat box. And you can see it looks kind of creepy to see like their back legs move and stuff because they're not legs, they're just poles. But it looks like a bat. Weird. And this could be determining the way that you're going to be buying drones in the future because right now you're looking at a uh, like a multi-rotor or a fixed wing drone. You might be looking at a bat bot as well in the future because they fly so well and they're so agile and like for indoor flying and all that. As you can see from the way that it's not flying that well yet, it's probably going to be a few years, a few years out before we can actually do anything with this. But I'm super excited about it because how much fun would it be to fly a bat? Like seriously, let's, I want to do it. Coming in at number three, 3D Robotics gets a waiver to fly in Class B airspace. Big deal, no waivers to fly in Class B airspace have been given yet until this moment. And the reason they got this waiver is because in Atlanta, they needed some 3D mapping of their parking garages to be able to do a huge construction project. And as you know, 3DR has been getting their butt kicked by DJI when it comes to commercial drone use, specifically with cameras. So they've been kind of shifting their whole focus to go, oh, oh no, we're more in industry or industrial kind of way. So this is a, a step towards that direction, using their drones to be able to map out things for the uh, airport so they can build stuff better. Um, this is a big deal because obviously drones can fly in Class B airspace if well regulated and the FAA is showing that, you know, if they have faith in the organization like 3D Robotics, then they can do it. So hopefully this means that the regulations are the way that you can get permits to be able to fly in classes of airspace you normally can't. It will go a little bit easier in the future, but I'm not going to get my hopes up yet because they still haven't even approved my fly at night request. All right, coming in at number four, I know last week that I told, uh, the last week on Drone News, I said that you know, we're kind of excited about the Secretary of Transportation um, because they didn't like to regulate, which means that drone stuff might not be regulated all that well. Well, I'm going to have to backpedal a little bit on that because, well, Trump put a freeze on all you know, regulations. Pretty much putting out that executive order that's saying for every one regulation they put out, two have to be repealed. And that obviously doesn't make sense, especially when it's a new tech industry like drones, because one thing that is sorely needed is regulation. That's why the Part 107 was such a big deal. And that's why moving forward, we're looking forward to new regulations to allow that people like myself and hopefully you, who are actually doing this for partially their living or all of their living, you know, will know that they can do it. And that, you know, it's everybody is on the same page. And that's going to be a real difficult thing for us to have to repeal two things from the very small amount of laws we have already to be able to add one new thing that makes sense. So that's making a lot of people in the FAA and the drone world scratch their heads. Like, how can we get around this executive order? I mean, obviously it was meant to help small businesses in a very optimistic way that doesn't even make any sense. Um, but nah, just nah. I don't know, I don't even, just nah. Coming in last but not least is my favorite, one of my favorite punching bags is the GoPro Karma. Um, guess what? I thought it was indefinitely suspended and they were never going to do anything else with it again. But I guess they did put a lot of money into R&D and, and like manufacturing it and all that kind of stuff. So it's back. Um, they figured out the problem with the drone was actually something to do with the battery. Um, so they fixed that problem. They're reshipping it out. And I was like, cool, well, maybe I'll get one because it's coming for a discount. And I can make more fun of it or find out if it's actually amazing. Nope. <laughs> they put it back out for the exact same price, still with no discount to buy the, uh, 
to buy the uh, GoPro camera with it. So like separately without the GoPro camera, it's like 800 with it. It's like a thousand, a little over a thousand. Um, so it's just like, all right, well, I guess it's back. Um, maybe some people will buy it. I highly doubt it because of how much bad press they got. Um, but that's the reason why they should lower the price on it. You know, maybe lose a little bit of money on it, but you already, you already made them all, bruh. Why don't you just sell them for a reasonable price? Because ain't nobody gonna buy it. But like I said, if you wanna give me one, I'll try it out. Droners, thank you for checking out this edition of Droner News. And if you wanna see more editions of things like Droner News, you can click right about here. Or if you wanna see the welcome video, whatever video they decide to put up that's up here that sometimes doesn't match what I say, you can click right here. Otherwise, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe. That allows us to, allows us to keep doing what we're doing as well as we have a Patreon link below. You should check it out, it's dope. And do me the favor like you always do and make sure you stay fly.